welcome back to Big Word Bible Studies. I am Tanya Dennis, and this is our very last video session for the book of 2 Kings. During this season, we talked not only about 2 Kings, we also talked about major portions of 2 Chronicles. We ventured into Isaiah, Jeremiah, um, Hosea. There were a whole bunch of different prophets who spoke to these kings of the divided kingdom of ancient Israel and of ancient Judah, and um, and brought them God's message throughout this time. So we covered a whole lot of ground. When we got together last night, we talked about, well, the study guide. If you didn't get the study guide, you can go to the website, tanyadennisbooks.com, look for the Big Word Bible Studies tab at the top, and you can download the free study guide there. It's PDF, easy to print, easy to do. Um, in the study guide, we covered the second half of chapter 23, and then we also covered chapters 24 and 25 of 2 Kings. This portion, um, there was a lot that happened, but there really wasn't a lot to talk about because it was kind of redundant of what we had talked about before. We know that God is holy. We know that he has, he expects his people to be holy. He will not stand for idolatry. And here we had three more bad kings who weren't doing what they were supposed to do. So before we get into this, I want to talk, I want to read to you something from the message. Now the message is a paraphrased version of scripture. It's written by Eugene Peterson. Most of you have probably seen it, probably read it. Um, I do not recommend using paraphrases for Bible study. When you are studying the Bible, please, please, please find a translation of scripture, not a paraphrase. Um, you want to know that you're going to directly to the source, directly to what, what it is that God said. Now, no translation is absolutely perfect, but if you're going to a translation, you know that you're not getting superfluous interpretation or commentary from the author. However, once you have a translation and once you know what the Word of God says, then you can go to other sources like paraphrases, like multiple versions, like commentaries, like books and notes and all of these other things, speakers. You can go to these other resources and use them to give you a more 3D perspective. You may not agree with what everyone says, but some of them might give you added insight into what God means and what scripture um, is trying to tell you. God has given us a lot of inspiration. His word first. Go to the main source, to a translation of scripture first, and then look around and see, okay, God, is this really what you want me to understand? Is this an accurate interpretation, and how can I take it from there? So the message, while I never go to it first, I do like the way that he phrases certain things. He's got some good turns of words, some great um, phrasing that adds new flesh to the scripture that I might not have realized otherwise. So um, I want to read this one portion to you. This is from 2 Kings. Again, this is the message from Eugene Peterson. 2 Kings chapter 22, 23, starting in verse 26. This is how he phrases it. But despite Josiah, God's hot anger did not cool. The raging anger ignited by Manasseh burned unchecked, and God, not swerving in his judgment, gave sentence. I'll remove Judah from my presence in the same way I removed Israel. I'll turn my back on this city, Jerusalem, that I chose. And even from this temple of which I have said, my name lives here. Throughout the next section, the part that we covered in our study guide, Eugene Peterson uses a certain phrase a few times. He says, this was not a surprise. And this was not a surprise. And this was not a surprise. All of these things that are happening here, where the king is, you know, annihilated. And then another king comes up and he's not good. And then another king comes up and Babylon takes over and everyone is sent into exile and the temple is destroyed and Jerusalem is burned and, and all of these horrible things that are happening to this chosen city of David, to this chosen nation of God, all of these things that are happening are not surprises because God had told them from the very, very beginning. When the temple of Solomon was dedicated, some 400, 500 years before, 400 years before, when it was dedicated, God made clear what the covenant was, that if you will follow me, if you will seek after me, if you refuse to chase after false gods, you will be my people and I will be your God and you will dwell in the land and I will bless you richly, okay? So this was the promise. However, okay, they knew from the beginning that if they did not follow God, if they chased after idols, if they turned their backs on God and disobeyed his laws and his commands, he would remove them from the land. They knew it. They knew it from the very, very beginning, and he was patient with them. He was long-suffering. Time and time again throughout this 400-year period, he sent prophet after prophet after prophet. He sent messages to remind them, have you forgotten who I am? Have you forgotten our commandment, our, our uh, not commandment, 
our um, covenant? Have you forgotten what we said? This is what we agreed to, and you said you would do it. Um, last night, as we were talking, one of the ladies had a question. She's like, but God said, I will never leave you nor forsake you. This is true. Um, he didn't leave them. If you remember in Daniel, even in the fiery furnace, okay, even in the fiery furnace, God was there. He was with them. He was preserving them. He was protecting them. They were not in the land, and they were not being blessed. They were slaves, and they were in bondage. They were in exile. However, he did not leave them. His presence, however, left the temple, and he removed them from the promised land because of their idolatry, because of their wickedness. So, um... Yeah, so that was what we talked about last night. We talked about um, God's holiness and how he has called us to be holy and how he has called us to be distinct. We are to live lives that are separate from the world. We're in the world, but we are not to be of the world. We are to be separate and distinct, set apart for his purposes. Um, what was it? Last month, a while back, in one of the previous videos, I talked about the pot and how you have to have the pot set aside. It is, it is holy for this purpose, for this one purpose. And if you mix anything else in there, it's going to taint the soup, it's going to taint the water, it's going to taint everything, and it's not going to be pure. It's not going to be what it was meant to be. So that is how we need to be. We need to live lives of distinction, set apart for our holy God, because he is holy. There is none like him, and there is no one more worthy than he. He is to be the object of all of our energy, all of our time, all of our focus, all of our devotion needs to go to him. So that's that. We This book ends kind of on a negative note. We know it's not the end of the story, but it does end in a rather... Um, I want to say depressing, but one of the ladies last night reprimanded me for that. I shouldn't say depressing because we know that God is good and that he is faithful and that um, while this is depressing for the people in there and it's not a happy ending, we know that redemption is coming. We know that God always keeps his promises, just like he keeps his promises to, to punish and to reprimand. He keeps his promises to be faithful, to preserve, to protect, to save. And he has promised to save us. And so uh, that's where this book ended. Now, we've been on a journey. Big Word has been on a journey through the historical books of the Old Testament for three years now. I think we've gone through three years of studies. Um, I know I've only been doing the videos for this one year, but you can go back on the website and check out the previous years of our study. We started in Judges. We went through... Um, yeah, we did Judges, we did First and Second Kings, we did, um, and then we've done Chronicles, and uh, so this is this is where we are. Um, we want to take a little bit of a break. Last night we talked about what we're going to study next. In January we're going to come back and we're going to be doing a different study. Um, this one is the book we're going to be doing. It is Wonderstruck by Margaret Feinberg, and um, I heard her speak in Nashville last month and was just so delighted to see her. I've read a number of her books and she's, oh, I love her. I want to be best friends with her. But, um, but yeah, so we're going to be doing her study. This, it's called Wonderstruck. The subtitle is Awaken to the Nearness of God. This is going to um, ignite in us an expectancy, an expectancy of God to do great things. Um, I'm very excited to look at this book. There is a workbook. If you are local and you want to participate, please let me know so that I can make sure I order the work workbooks for you. We're probably going to start at the end of January. I'm looking at January 30th for our start date. There is a video uh, portion with this. So in our in-home group, we're going to be doing about 20, 25 minutes of Margaret's video at the beginning, and then we'll have our discussion. There will be homework and um, workbook assignments in between the, uh, the sessions that we have. If you're long distance and you are online, I'm not going to be able to share the videos with you for copyright reasons. However, you can purchase the workbooks and go through the study with us just like we are here. You're just going to miss out on her portion of that. However, if you want to, I don't know, we can franchise Big Word or something and you guys can get the, uh, the study guide in your church and maybe you can have a small group and we can have a small group and we can connect online through the website. That would be fun, wouldn't it? Um, all right, I guess that's about it. I am so delighted that you've joined me for this study. I really, I hope and pray that you've been able to glean some insights, uh, not only about God's big word, but about God himself, about his character and how, how faithful he is, how relentlessly he pursues those 
whom he loves. And he does love you. He loves me. He loves you. He does not desire that any should perish. And I just, I pray that you have been able to develop a more intimate relationship with him through this study. And I hope you'll join us again in January. Feel free to stop by the website, leave some comments on the blog or some comments here on YouTube. And uh, yeah, until we meet again. Thanks a bunch. Bye.